All right, so this is this uh, meeting is the first executive uh, standing committee meeting of the uh, new council. And uh, we're doing this uh, virtually, of course, and this is being live broadcast. So I'll call the meeting to order. And uh, we'll go through our list of uh, attendees to make sure everybody's working, beginning with uh, the deputy mayor, Councillor Outhead. Sorry, it caught me off guard, Mike. I am here, and good morning. Uh, good morning to all. And I'll try and get the camera on here, but though I look better on radio. Uh, there we are. Good morning to all. Looking forward to it. Awesome. Councillor Blackburn. Good morning, everybody. Hope everyone had a great weekend. Awesome. Councillor Morris, are you in the library? <laughs> yes, I'm here in my light filled office in Clayton Park. Very cool. Councillor Russell. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, Catherine, that uh, office looks a little bit more downtown or, or Clayton Park has built up more than I am used to seeing it. Uh, and I'm coming here for, uh, from uh, wonderful and sunny Lower Sackville. Thank you, Councillor Hensby. Bonjour, comment ça va? Ça va bien et vous? Been away here in District 2. Good morning, all. Je vais bien, merci. Councillor Mason. Good morning, Mr. Mayor. Uh, pleased to be here from beautiful District 7. All right. Our CIO, Jacques Dubay. Good morning, Jacques. Good morning, Mr. Mayor. Good morning, Councillors. Uh, John Traves. Uh, I don't know if John's with us yet. We're reaching out to him, I understand. Ian McLean is with us. We heard Ian. How are you doing, Ian? Morning, sir. Doing excellent. And Phoebe's uh, at work on other things. So we will look at the approval of the minutes. Now, the minutes that we're approving go back to February and April. So I'm not sure who was on executive then or Ian, if it strictly matters at a committee level, but um, Councillor uh, Outhit perhaps might want to move the approval of the. Were you on the executive last year or Councillor Mason, were you? I can't remember. I was. I, yes. I was, so I'm happy to second it then. Okay, so moved by former deputy and uh, seconded by current deputy. Um, on that, ready for the question? All in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? That's carried. The approval of the order of business. Uh, Mr. Clerk, what do you have? Uh, no additions today, sir. Members of committee? I'm going. Um, does somebody want to uh, approval agenda as uh, circulated? Moved I by will, Hensby. I will second that, Councillor Russell. Seconded by Councillor uh, Russell. Do we need uh, at a committee? We just do a voice vote, right? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That's our agenda. Business. Aye. Business arising. Mr. Clerk, anything? Nothing coming from the minutes, Mayor Savage. All right, thank you, Ian. Calls for declaration of conflicts. Motions of rescission, reconsideration and rescission are none. Deferred business, none. Tabled matters, none. Correspondence, um, Mr. Uh, Clerk, there's John Traves joining us. No correspondence is received for this meeting. Petitions. We have a presentation this morning, folks. We're very pleased to uh, have with us today Juanita Peters, Executive Director, and Lyle Grant, President of the Africville Heritage Trust. Um, and they're going to speak to us on a presentation, The Spirit Lives On. And um, I'm going to ask Juanita and uh, Lyle to make sure your webcasts or TV broadcasts are muted and that you're listening using your phone. Um, Star six is how you unmute. You'll hear an announcement that you're lo no longer muted and uh, up to 10 minutes. Uh, so Juanita and Lyle, I, I heard you were on the phone earlier. We're delighted to have you with us. Thank you for joining us. Uh, if you can hear us and we can hear you, the floor is yours. Well, good morning, everybody. Morning. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Hello, good morning. 
Good morning. Good morning. And um, we're so happy to be here to present to you all this morning. We're just going to first look at a little uh, update on uh, Africville. For those of you who aren't familiar with us at all, we're representing the Africville Museum, the Africville Mar uh, uh, Heritage Trust. And um, just to sort of backtrack a little bit, the community itself uh, dates back more than 200 years. Uh, and as some of you are probably very aware, it was raised in the 1960s. And at that time, it was a community of about 400 people. So just to put it in perspective, that's roughly the size of Annapolis Royal. Uh, it was a place where uh, self-contained you know, community with a couple churches, a school, a post office, and a grocery store, various businesses that had sports teams, and I heard you, Mr. Mayor, mention the hockey game last night. Uh, as you know, the Colored Hockey League was a celebrated uh, portion of Canadian history, and uh, most recently, um, the uh, Africville Seaside uh, and uh, uh, were on the new Canada Post stamp. Uh, we have other celebrities that come from Africville, like George Dixon. Uh, this unveiled a wonderful uh, art installation for the public to view and enjoy on the property in COVID times. <laughs> and uh, so just always trying to find ways to celebrate the history of Africville and Nova Scotia. Um, sadly, one of the things that bound the community together was the racism that they faced and endured. And as a result, there are many stories and personal experiences of trauma that have been shared over the last 50 years. And actually, it's one of the reasons why the African United Baptist Association was formed. There is no such organization like it anywhere else in Canada, uh, a collection of 130 churches from the African Nova Scotian uh, mosaic. Um, former residents had many different reactions and opinions to what befell them in, in Africville collectively. And in that respect, this has not changed. So we know that there are, are many different minds and ideas about what should have happened to Africville. Um, and here we are today. In 2010, HRM and the Africville Genealogy Society reached an agreement to settle the outstanding litigation, which had been going on for years. The terms included acknowledgement of the loss, which was the formal apology, which was made by the then mayor, Peter Kelly, $3 million in municipal contribution to the project inclusive of both capital construction and operational costs, a conveyance of 2.5 acres of land adjacent to the west of Seaview Park, park maintenance agreement between Africville Heritage Trust Board and HRM for the land, known as Seaview Park, and staff to work with the Africville Heritage Trust and stakeholders to establish a maintenance agreement, which actually happened as of last year. Uh, and the purpose of that maintenance agreement was to always have somebody um, who is connected to Africville, uh, descendant, uh, to be sort of the leader on how the, the lands are taken care of and actually also um, uh, have offer employment to former residents and descendants. Uh, community development, establishment of the African Nova Scotian Affairs Office or function within HRM that would enable our organization to better engage with the African Halifax Regional uh, Municipality community. And I urge everyone to take the time to learn all they can about the history of Africville and to support its ongoing spirit and resilience. The HRM archives have some excellent information and we actually deal with them uh, uh, almost on a monthly basis. A new organization was formed called the Africville Heritage Trust to implement and act as stewards of the terms of the agreement. And although many former residents and descendants worked to create and participate in the AHT and museum, there are still others who continue to seek other forms of recompense for the city's actions. Like any community, there are many voices and many opinions, and we understand that. We've included a, a news release here to just sort of give you some background information on the entire um, um, formal deed and transfer to the Africville residents. And uh, just to tell you now who we are, who is the Africville Heritage Trust? Okay, created uh, 2010 as a result of the negotiated settlement between HRM and the Africville Genealogy Society. <clears throat> Its mandate is to create a long-term sustainability connection uh, for former residents and their descendants and to educate the general public by telling the history story 
of the community from the beginning in the 1800s to the 1960s to develop, promote, and share interpretive and educational resources to develop economic development initiatives that will create employment opportunities. I feel Heritage Board and staff, Executive Director Juanita Peters, seasonal and part-time staff supported by federal and provincial grants. <clears throat> the board is made up of about 15 individuals consisting of former residents and descendants, uh, a member of the Genealogy Society, uh, members of the public from both the African Nova Scotian community and beyond, and ex officio municipal liaisons, which we have two on our board. Uh, what have we achieved over the last 10 years? Well, the most obvious thing, of course, is the, is the museum and the renaming of Seaview Park to Africville, the renaming of Africville Road, the establishment of a scholarship fund for descendants of former residents. We give uh, four or five scholarships out each year, um, uh, total accumulating $5,000 every year. We're constantly uh, finding ways to build that fund up through all kinds of fun things. Some of you may have heard about the cookbook that just came out. Um, that has been a real hot ticket. And uh, I think we sold a little over 460 copy, copies in a month. And uh, I know the mayor's got some on hand there if you wanna check some recipes out. Mm -hmm. And also a couple years ago, we did a, uh, a calendar to raise uh, money for the scholarship fund. And again, another hot ticket item that went out the door really, really fast. Um, we hold a lot of arts and cultures, uh, cultural events, and, and most specifically, we hold a lot of events that include everybody from the city, anybody who wants to come. We've had Tai Chi on the land, uh, weekly Tai Chi. We've had uh, yoga, weekly yoga on the land. Um, we do book releases. Um, you name it, we're open to it. And in these times of COVID, we're in an ideal situation to be able to host things, um, uh, that people can come to and share and still social social distance. Um, and you know, one of the other things we've done uh, in terms of you know trying to uh, become more sustainable is uh, COVID times. It's been tough, of course, as it has been for everybody. But we started an online shop uh, and promote it on a weekly basis. You know, by putting one item or another up in front of everybody, and um, that has proved to be very very successful. Some of the other achievements, assume uh, property maintenance of the Africville Park, creation of employment opportunities for members of the African Nova Scotian community, continued development and delivery of educational and social programs. We have partnerships with universities um, in Vancouver, uh, Ontario, Montreal, uh, and we've had a two-year partnership in London, England. Uh, we are always looking for uh, ways of engaging around the world, you know, and talking about the Africville story and, and talking about how we compare to other people's stories that might be similar. Um, our relationship with HRM has grown with the help of the African Nova Scotian Integration Office. And over the past 10 years, we've built relationships with the Integration Office, Parks and Recs, Planning and Development, Transportation and Public Works, Real Estate, Municipal Archives. And I just want to say that um, a number of of departments. We have a, something that's become a yearly thing with Heidi Boutlier, the horticulturalist from HRM, where Heidi uh, brings uh, wonderful uh, plants uh, and flowers uh, in the spring of the year. And we've made that a, a yearly event where it's sort of like a team building thing. It's the day when my summer staff will have just started work. Uh, and we're all out in the field together planting and, and working. And it's just a lovely, a lovely thing. And, um, and the entire public get to enjoy it all summer and for a good portion of the fall as well. Um, our continued partnership with HRM, we're hoping to re-energize and strengthen our partnership and seek to enlist HRM insisting to reconvene the Tripartite Government Committee that supported the collaboration with the community to establish a fitting legacy for the community of Africville. We're hoping that you'll work with us to realize our goal of proudly keeping the spirit of Africville, Canada's oldest urban African Canadian community alive through concluding land negotiations with HRM and the port. We had a fabulous conversation uh, with Alan Gray uh, this fall. Lyle, do you want to yeah. talk about that? Well, 
You want to do that now? You yep. want to do that? Later? Oh, yes. We had a, a, a great meeting with Captain Alan Gray, and uh, he told us what he would like to do with the infill that they're doing out here in front of us. And we were ecstatic because he, in, in the, the end of the conversation, he would like to see that their uh, piece of property go to the Afterville Heritage Trust. And we've already started making plans. <laughs> <laughs> so we had actually been making plans for that area on our side for three and a half years as yeah, a marina. It's part of our sustainability plan. And um, so when the infill started happening, we were getting phone calls and people dropping in and asking us all kinds of uncomfortable questions. Um, to them, it started feeling a lot like history uh, repeating itself. But in the back of our minds with our conversation with Alan Gray, we looked at it like making lemons, <laughs> you know, lemonade out of lemons. And, um, you know, that there quite possibly uh, would be, you know, a, a, a something good for, for everybody to come out of this. Um, so we are really interested in continuing that conversation and showing HRM what our plans for that uh, property would be. Uh, and for our marina, our Africville marina, and how that Africville marina uh, plays into our sustainability plan, uh, including, you know, all the things we talked about, you know, being able to uh, offer employment uh, and also have people from Africville or descendants of Africville um, tied in in some way uh, so that they're continuing to be involved in the land uh, and, uh, and telling the story. We're also um, really interested in continuing to work with the transportation, the Active Transportation Committee in uh, talking about pedestrian tra traffic and transit, you know, here to Africville. I'm really excited about the walking trails that have been uh, um, uh, talked about. We're looking forward to getting back into those conversations. Uh, we're hoping that you'll help us work towards a heritage designation. As you know, uh, a portion of the land is considered um, heritage property, but not all of it, and providing guidance and assistance in our future development efforts. Um, we want to promote Africville, not just as a important part of Halifax's history, an important part of Nova Scotia's history, but a very unique story in the Canadian mosaic. And as we look forward to the future, that's what we're looking at. We're looking at um, you know, how to, how to continue telling the story. One of the things that we're doing as of uh, this month is uh, we've created a virtual uh, museum so that people can access the story all around the world at no cost. The official launch of that will be on February 25th, although some people will actually get a little taste of it on the 28th, uh, which is Thursday, I believe. Um, we're looking at a de development agreement with HRM that supports our long-term strategic plan. We talked a little bit about fundraising. Um, traditionally, we've lacked the connections in the corporate community to achieve the level of success that we need, and we're hoping that HRM can help us with that. And finally, the Interpretive Centre. Well, the Interpretive Centre um, has always been something that was part of the plan for Africville. Right now, the museum exists uh, inside the church. Um, that is not sustainable. Um, it's very limited and uh, uh, it, it limits the activities that can happen. Uh, so the construction of the Interpretive Centre is, um, is outfitting and uh, staffing of a proper interpretive center is one of the major goals that we're looking for uh, that will give us um, more opportunities uh, for growth on the land. We talked a little bit about the marina. Um, and again, the marina conversation we've been having for over three and a half years. We've already had meetings with the COA. Uh, we've had uh, meetings um, federally, provincially. Uh, yeah, it's uh, you know, a conversation we'd love to bring you into. Um, the baptismal pond, religious life was a cornerstone of the Africville community and baptisms were regularly held in the Bedford Basin. We'd like to enable the revival of this tradition through the construction of the baptismal pond on the former site of the community. Um, the columbarium, many former residents and their descendants have always said that they'd like to be buried down here. And we thought, well, if we had a columbarium, it would be quite interesting because that also becomes a part of the landscape and it also becomes uh, something that I think other people would enjoy. One of the things that people do today when they come to uh, Africville is they often take their picture 
uh, by the um, Seaview, um, the, um, oh my goodness, the uh, monument at the front of the park. Uh, and the reason why they do that is because it has all the names of the, um, the original settlers in Africville. So they look at that as uh, something that they can connect to. Sundial. The sundial, the sundial, that's the word I'm looking for, the sundial. Yeah. So um, just in terms of our sustainability um, and where we go from here, we've already been in talks with um, the, the province and the federal government, and we're hoping that HRM will join this tripartite uh, in an effort to secure and promote the important part of the history of Halifax and Africville. So that's our presentation. Any questions? All right, thank you. <clears throat> thank you very much, folks. And uh, Juanita, you mentioned the, uh, the cookbook. Uh, which I have here. <laughs> you are one of the authors, along with uh, Claudia Castillo Prent and Adina Fraser Marsman. So anybody who wants to get that uh, can uh, find it for the very low price of around 20 bucks. Some great recipes in there. I looked at the ones for bread pudding and uh, blueberry grunt. And uh, uh, I haven't tried the eels with onion yet. And I'm not sure that I'll get to <laughs> You gotta get on it. That, that was a Saturday afternoon meal. <laughs> Anyway, there's a number of great recipes. I encourage people to dig those out. Just before I see if there's uh, any questions, I have a couple myself. Um, I don't think we got the, I didn't get the presentation in advance. Did, did we get it in advance? If we did, I, I missed it. If we didn't, I'd like to see, I'd like to get that. It's kind of a nice uh, uh, roadmap of what's been happening. Uh, so Ian, maybe yeah, we can talk with, uh, go ahead, Juanita. Yeah, so you will have uh, two copies. You have a PDF form and a PowerPoint form. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Um, I don't see any uh, questions in the chat. Let me ask a question or two if I could. Um, you, you raised the issue of the church, uh, Juanita and, and Lyle, and I know for a lot of people that's a really important um, part of Africville that people would like to you know, be married or buried or uh, have more services. Um, the museum is, is purposeful, but the actual church was such a centerpiece of uh, Africville. Can you just chat a bit more about that? Yeah, I can tell you. And um, uh, this year alone, we had uh, eight um, people ask if they could have their weddings here uh, on the property. And of course, um, uh, because of COVID times, you know, we, we couldn't have really, really large groups regardless, even if they were outdoors. Uh, although we have made um, 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 a provision to be able to ha host, you know, weddings of like 25, 30 people or under. We do have a wedding uh, scheduled. Actually, it's Nelson Carvery's son who's planning on getting married here uh, this fall. Um, so we'd like to see those things happen. Uh, also, uh, New, New Horizons, has, which is the former uh, uh, Kamal Street Baptist Church, have held their church service awesome. on all summer long here on, on our grounds here. Yeah, and fall, right into the fall, as long as the weather was, was good. Um, so there, there is an appetite for it. Um, it was always full uh, to... COVID capacity this year, uh, and um, yeah, so there's there's something about uh, being able to come to these grounds and celebrate, and as you know, um, during the reunions, normally that would be the only church service on the on the property, it would hold, be held down in the park uh, area because uh, the, it would be, you know, you needed uh, space to have a, a, a lot of people uh, from all over the province, but but we would like to have, um, as people have requested, um, formal events and formal services here uh, in the church and for the artifacts to be able to grow, which they cannot in, in this location. Right. Thank you for that. Um, and I, I'm, I saw at the end of the presentation, you spoke about things that are underway with the port and other things in our parks and rec. And I know that our CAO has been very involved in those things and um, 
considers this a very important thing for us to get done as a city. Um, and um, I think we all agree that there's huge potential. Um, as you said, there's different points of view on Africa and what to do with it, how best to right, um, what happened there and to make it much more living going forward. I would ask you, Juanita or Lyle, um, how familiar you are with the African Nova Scotia Road to Prosperity that we launched last week with the partnership. And if you see the opportunity there. Yeah, so um, I'm a little familiar with it. I've been at a couple of meetings. I know that uh, it officially launched last week. Congratulations. And uh, I know that the Halifax Partnership has been working on it for about five years now. Uh, and so um, there absolutely could be a place in there for us as well. So um, that's, you know, one of the things that we'll be looking at as we continue to uh, develop this plan. Right. As you, as you will know, uh, Irvin Carvery, a name you might know, uh, is the co-chair along with uh, the great Dolly Williams. And I want to uh, thank Carol Ann Wright at the partnership and Io, um, uh, Alaba Jabi from the city who have been, done great work on that. And I certainly encourage you to become very familiar with that. Thank you for that. Uh, Wei, you have a question, Councillor Mason? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I, great presentation. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, two questions, uh, not entirely related, I suppose. Uh, one is, my understanding is, uh, vague understanding from, because uh, I wasn't on council at the time, is that there was talk about an interpretive centre separate from the uh, replica church uh, when the negotiations were being undertaken. So when I hear you saying there isn't enough room for the uh, artefacts and memorabilia, uh, is that part of it? Like, are there ambitions for further buildings on site? Uh, and uh, uh, you know, as per the kind of plan that I that that I remember reading about in the in the mid two thousands, or 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 uh, it's around two thousand and eight, I guess. And then the second question was, uh, have you been involved with the discussion? Can you describe that with staff? For the Windsor Street Exchange uh, uh, upgrades that are that, that we're working on right now, because part of your presentation is the transit and uh, uh, active transportation piece, and uh, while it doesn't entirely solve the problem, that could go a long way to making it so buses and uh, 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 pedestrian and bike access. Uh, uh, will be vastly improved. So I'm wondering if you've been involved in those discussions and 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 uh, what your level of comfort is with what's proposed. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, the, the interpretive center was supposed to be built at the same time that the church was back uh, 10 years ago. And because of resources, I believe, and it wasn't a good time to raise money at that time, it didn't get done, so they've done the church instead. But after 10 years now, I think it's, we need to revisit that and and look at that a little more and, and perhaps uh, start that development here on the property, on the site. Yeah, good good stuff. And, and on the Windsor Street Exchange, have you been involved with that discussion? So Wayne, I have been involved with that discussion and um, uh, just sort of following it along, uh, being a part of the um, um, discussion and really trying to figure out, I mean, it's, it's still early days, uh, really just trying to figure out what that's going to look like in the end. And, and um, there are certainly some advantages uh, that could uh, wind up benefiting Africville. Um, there are still also some concerns um, as to, you know, what that's going to look like with the traffic on the other end and where it ends and uh, so there's, you know, still a lot to be done there. Um, I haven't actually been in touch with anybody uh, since November, but I do believe we have a meeting coming up in the next week or so. I do believe. Okay. okay. Also, also on that, also on the Windsor Street Exchange, uh, <clears throat> there's going to be a lot of construction going on in that area, and of course, there's, there's only two ways into Africville, which is that end of the of the uh, where the development is going to take place and the Barrington Street uh, uh, entrance. <clears throat> that Barrington Street entrance and access is very, very dangerous. If you're, if there can be, a, you could have a serious accident down at not good spot. 
So I was wondering myself when I heard about the Windsor Street Exchange <clears throat> and how much work was going to be done. Uh, if if we're going to lose that entrance to 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 our property, or is it going to remain open? And can it remain open during the construction? I haven't heard anything on that yet. Well, OK, thank you for that. Uh, what I will do is I'll I'll talk to Councillor Smith about it because that's the way I've heard it described is the uh, the Barrington Street uh, is really an entrance, but not an exit. You know, it's so hard to get out of uh, and yeah. dangerous. So so uh, I'll take this to Councillor Smith and we'll get back to you, uh, you know, after the meeting uh, uh, and, and get in contact with staff because because that's exactly my concern as well. So so I, I will follow up, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Oh, thank you. And uh, we'll go to the CAO. He may have a bit more knowledge on this. I know he's been involved in many discussions, but he, uh, whatever he wishes to speak on, uh, CAO. Well, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and good morning, everyone. And thank you for the presentation, folks. Um, you know, this, uh, the, I, I think it would be important that we get together um, sooner and later, uh, along with yourselves and the port, uh, to um, advance some discussions. I can tell you that there's been ongoing discussions between us and the port, and I know there's been conversation with you folks, um, Juanita and, uh, and, your, and your colleague there, that lead to us uh, somehow getting into an arrangement whereby the, the that marina project could happen. So we're very interested in that, uh, as you well know, and uh, I would certainly I will, I will undertake to organize a uh, meeting so we can all get together yourselves and myself and uh, and uh, our real estate team and I'll probably invite Alan as well just so I'm going to make sure that we're all on the same page and speaking the same language. So I think it's important. Um, you know, I've, I've actually uh, asked my real estate team to start doing some work on on all of this uh, in terms of what the delineation of the land would be and what where the separations are and where, and where all the, uh, the points of egress and ingress may, may, may be. On the issue of the uh, Barrington Street entrance, that's very, we're very sensitive to that as well. So in the context of in the context of consultation around the design of, of, of the Windsor Street Exchange, all, the, all, all of those issues need to be taken into consideration. Certainly the objective here is not to diminish access in any way is actually to enhance it. So, um, you know, you're going to be sure, sure that we will be having conversations with you on that. Uh, Peter Duncan and his team were in the design, the design, the construction design area. Uh, we'll be, we'll certainly be engaging with you and uh, more recently uh, more of a tender to a, a consulting firm to help us with some of those design issues and, and uh, we'll certainly will continue the consultations and uh, make sure that we, uh, we have Solutions that we actually land on and bring before a councillor are something we can all support. So, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jacques. Great. Thank, thank you. you. See no other questions. I'll just ask uh, Juanita where can people buy this uh, cookbook if they wish? Where can they go to get it? They can call us right here at the museum anytime. <laughs> we would set up an appointment uh, for them to either pick it up or we could mail it out. So what's your, give us a contact. There are people that are watching this live online from around the world. What's the best number? Uh, the best number is 902-422-20, well, 1116, sorry. 902-422-1116. Or they can email me at gmafricvillemuseum at gmail.com or visit our online shop. Thank you. Uh, it's a great book. I see Irvin's got a recipe in there from his mom on uh, pork back, which looks kind of cool. Um, is there anything uh, uh, that you would like Juanita or or Lyle to uh, add before we uh, say goodbye to you and thank you very much for joining us? Well, first I'd like to say before Lyle says anything that um, uh, I've been the uh, executive director here for three years and I really enjoyed my relationship with HRM. Uh, we've, I've only got to touch on a few things that we've done in partnership, but uh, we've had a lot of fun here. And, um, you know, because you're having fun doesn't mean that you're not working and you're not growing. So uh, we've been doing a lot of that too and uh, looking forward to continued partnership, looking forward to working together. Yeah, and the only thing I would add is that <clears throat> We're, we're, we're in talks with the with the, the province and we want to bring that we really really think that we need to bring that team together with the province the city and the federal government 
to reach some goals that we have. And, and also, I think it would be great for the city and and the whole province and all of Canada. I agree with that. And I, you know, I assure you of our commitment uh, to do the right thing. You know, I'm meeting with a number of people on Africville uh, these days. And like every single issue that we face as a city, every issue, there's lots of points of view. Doesn't always mean that one's right and one is wrong. We need to listen to the voices, but we very much appreciate the work. Uh, Juanita Peters, who's the executive director, and Lyle Grant, chair, both with the Africville Heritage Trust. Thank you both very much. Thank you so thank much. You. Have a thank great you, week. everybody. Enjoy. All right. Thank you. Okay, colleagues, we're going to move on in our uh, agenda. Information items brought forward, there is none. I'm going to ask councillors if you can leave your mute on if you're not speaking, but if you can show your face, because all I see is a huge Way Mason uh, right now. It's, it was starting to freak is me out a little bit. Really anything uh, wrong with that? Or, uh, it's no, it was like on a Monday morning. Okay. <laughs> now then, I'm going to ask some of you to take your camera off, starting with. No, I won't. No, I won't. Thank you all very much. Uh, of course, if you can keep the mute on when you're not speaking to, to avoid uh, feedback and avoid. Uh, Paul Russell having to point fingers at whoever is uh, causing the uh, problem, which he no doubt will. All right, colleagues, uh, the first thing is item 12.1.1, councillor appointments to boards and uh, committees. Does somebody want to put the uh, motion on the floor and then we can have a discussion? Deputy Mayor. Sorry, I don't have that in front of me right at the moment. Councilor Black. Uh, yeah, Council I've got it here. Councilor Blackburn, go ahead. All right. Um, Just lost I move my that the, Sorry, thanks, Lisa. I move that the Executive Standing Committee 1 nominate one member of Council to the Women's Advisory Committee for a term to November of 2022, and two, nominate up to three members of Council to the Accessibility Advisory Committee for a term to November of 2022. I so move. I'll second that, Councilor Russell. Seconded by Councillor Russell. So, um, colleagues, we have looking at number two first. We have up to three members of council on accessibility advisory, and I believe we still only have the one, uh, Ian, uh, that has. Uh, Councillor Russell, are you? Uh, I am interested in serving on that committee. Awesome. Okay. So, Councillor Daigle Gammon uh, has indicated an interest in serving on that one, and Councillor Russell has as well. So, that's awesome. We can appoint two and hope that maybe somebody else may wish to, but it is uh, up to three. So, um, Councillor Russell will consider you nominated and seconded uh, for that position. And I can tell you it's a committee that I've served on for a few years and it's uh, a very important committee. Um, so, Ian, should we vote on number two and then go back to number one? Uh, that is completely fine if you want to break it out that way. OK, so uh, all those in favor of Councillor Russell and Councillor Daigle Gammon joining the Accessibility Advisory Committee, please stand up and turn around. Yes, and so, yes. I'll, I'll move right. that if no one did. Awesome. No, the, the whole motion was moved, but just taking them kind of one at a time. So okay. Right. Okay. Sure. now on the uh, members of uh, to the Women's Advisory, so Councillor Blackburn is already on, I believe, and um, councillors, we had a number of councillors who were interested, and I think in speaking with Phoebe last week, uh, uh, Tim and I at the executive, they went back obviously and said, look, are you still interested? Because these expressions were made early on and it looks like we're down to two, Ian, is that correct? That is correct and I'll defer to Phoebe for that if there's any additional questions. Is Phoebe with us now? I am here, Mr. Mayor. Awesome. Um, so we have two and they will have to be nominated I guess, and uh, seconded, is that correct? That's correct. So the Women's Advisory Committee does have Councillor Blackburn already appointed and there is a uh, space for one additional member. Um, so the two interested councillors are Councillor Stoddard and Councillor Purdy. Um, so if we have, uh, you know, if anybody in the on the committee wishes to move either of those candidates, um, if, there's, if there's no obvious uh, selection, we can go to a secret ballot. I've got that ready to go as well. I will. Just before we do that, uh, it was our hope that we didn't really want to pick people against each other so early on, and it's very hard to to pick a councillor over another, especially so early in a term. So obviously some councillors have other things that they decided they would do, which we appreciate, and that there are two left. So 
if we'll accept nominations and if uh, there's two nominations we'll go to a vote on um, what is it ladder monkey or monkey ladder or whatever it's called so we do have a survey monkey that will be submitted to everybody yeah okay uh, councillor russell <laughs> work on him like Walt. he needs to be updated thank you i'd like to uh, nominate councillor purdy for that position thank you is there a second for that uh, I'll, Councillor Mason seconds. Any, any further nominations? Yeah, I'd like to nominate Councillor Stoddard. Councillor Stoddard has been nominated. Is there a second? I'll second. I will second that. Either okay. side. Um, I don't know really that there's much point in having much debate on this, uh, colleagues. Um, we have to choose uh, one uh, of, of the two, both of whom would be fine. Uh, members of the Women's uh, Advisory Committee, but I think Ian will have to go to the Survey Monkey and make a choice, eh? Yeah, we'll send the Survey Monkey out right now. Uh, so, Mr. Mayor and members of the Executive Standing Committee, I've posted the Survey Monkey link in your meeting chat. Um, so, if you can click on that link and you should open up to a browser um, with, uh, with the survey. Um, we have uh, kept it blank, so it's candidate A and candidate B. Um, so we have candidate A would be Councillor Purdy and council and candidate B would be Councillor Stoddard. So to cast your vote for Councillor uh, Purdy to be the member of council on the Women's Advisory Committee, please select candidate A. And uh, to select Councillor Stoddard, please uh, select candidate B. How do we get back, Phoebe? Do we press back or do we wait for the screen to change? Um, sorry, Mr. Mayor. How do we get back to our other screen from Survey Monkey? Do we press back? Uh, uh, you should be able to just click back onto your Teams in your task. Uh, After you have voted, you can close that window. And, yes. And just to confirm, that was candidate A was Councillor Purdy. Candidate B was Councillor Stoddard. Has everyone voted? Yeah. Is a tie possible? I hope it's a tie is not possible. Um, Mr. Mayor, I'm I'm not seeing any survey responses come in on my survey. I'm wondering if everybody everybody's voted of it. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Nothing. I've I've had yes. no responses coming through on my end. So maybe I, a hard refresh because I just uh, clicked on the link again and it's recording that I already voted. So something happened. Mm -hmm. Rudy Giuliani involved. One point three billion. Yeah. I'm getting the same message that I already voted. Yeah, same here. Mr. Mayor, my apologies. I'm not able to retrieve the results right now. I'm going to have to connect ICT um, and, and get the results. So if you can just bear with me, I'll contact ICT and maybe we can come back to this item. My apologies. OK. Uh I would suggest, Mayor Savage, we can get our technical issues figured out over here. If, we, if you're OK moving on to the next item, we can have this corrected and send the survey out again, and we'll revote from the beginning. OK, so we passed number two. We have to come back to number one. OK. So we're going to go to 12.1.2. Uh, the proposed 2021 Executive Standing Committee meeting schedule. Does somebody want to put the motion on the floor? I will, Mr. Mayor. Mason. Go ahead, Ray. Uh, I move that the Executive Standing Committee approve the proposed 2021 meeting schedule as 
uh, outline and attachment one of the staff report dated January 11, 2021 as a move. Uh, I heard second that, Councillor Russell. I heard Councillor Hensby uh, first go to that. Um, any discussion on it, Thomas? Ready for the question? Question. question. All, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, that is carried. Um, item 12.2, this is Women's Advisory Committee amendments to the Women's Advisory Committee terms of reference. Does somebody wish to put that on the floor? Councillor Blackburn, perhaps? Sure thing. Uh, I move that the Executive Standing Committee request a staff report with respect to amendments to Administrative Order Number 2019-004-GOV respecting the Women's Advisory Committee in the Halifax Regional Municipality to include women from racialized communities as part of the committee complement. I still move. Second. Second that. Second that. I saw Councillor Morris's hand. Um, discussion on it, uh, colleagues? Yeah, if I could just put a little context around this. Uh, I'm on the Women's Advisory Committee and uh, they just wanted uh, um, the the terms of reference are, are rather specific in the, uh, the people that they would like to see make up this committee. Uh, but uh, the committee felt that uh, that just you know in, just including the phrase women from racialized communities would encompass uh, more more people, and uh, so that was just uh, I think it's just more a language update more than anything else. Anybody else, Councillor Russell? Thank you. I would hope that uh, when this language is updated is that it would reach out to encourage people to join and not make it a requirement that the uh, Women's Advisory Committee must have someone from a particular uh, from a particular group. Um, so it is simply a recommendation or, or uh, inviting people to the table, but that's the end of it. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, if I could, could I ask for clarification in regards to the terminology racialized versus diversified? You know, it, uh, you know, we're talking about diversity and inclusion, but the word racialized, um, is there a distinct difference in regards to using certain language versus racialized community versus a diversity of communities or diversified communities? Is that a question that Phoebe could ask answer at this point or John Traves is there? Uh, ra racialized diversity on the basis of race would be would be a narrower term than diversity writ large, right? So if you're looking at it on the basis of race, then you would you'd be using racialized. Where if you're looking at a much broader uh, piece, then you would go the all the other way. And this is a staff report too, right? That's going to come back and with further information. Yeah. Uh, right. Discuss that then. I think the point that Councillor Hensby raised can be uh, considered further. Anybody else? Uh, Council uh, Jacques, uh, okay. Uh, ready for the question, colleagues? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those Aye. opposed? Aye. Okay, I see a note from. Uh, I don't know. Um, uh, I see a note from you, Ian. Yeah, I was going to suggest for the vote on the Women's Advisory Committee, uh, if it's the will of the committee that we'll just have everyone text me uh, their votes for that committee rather than trying to get the survey monkey tool to work on the fly. Is everybody okay with you doing that? Any opposition to that? Okay. Um, what do we text it to, Ian? So I'm text gonna put, or email? Uh, text might be the easiest because I can easily delete that. So I'm going to put my number into the chat. And if you could just please put in your name and either Councillor Purdy or Councillor Stoddard. Uh, I'm going to paste in my number right now. I'm 
And please include your name into that text as well. Ian, can you just uh, say your phone number out loud there? Because the very the chat line is very very small in regards to print, and I don't have the link on my phone. No problem. So it's nine zero two. Yep. Two three seven. Three seven. Two eight six zero. Thank you. How's it going, Ian? I am just waiting on two more to come through. Do you have mine, Ian? I do not yet. Oh. Yourself and Councillor Hensby. Hmm. It's hard to do it on a dial phone, David, I know. I think I just sent mine to uh, area code 992. I'll try a different one. Okay, I can confirm I have the votes and Councillor Stoddard will be on the Women's Advisory Committee. Okay. So, um, so that completes 12.1.1. We've, we've sort of, we've separated them into two and we voted on them individually, correct Ian? Uh, yeah, because that was done via text, I wouldn't mind us getting a quick call of the question if you're okay with that, Mayor Savage. Okay, so the nominees are uh, Councillor Daigle Gammon and Councillor Russell for uh, advisory and Councillor Stoddard for uh, women's advisory. All uh, those accessibility advisory, right, for yeah. Russell? Yeah. Yes, accessibility advisory committee. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Aye. That's carried. Thank you. We'll go to 12.3.1, colleagues. Amendments to Design Review Committee's terms of reference. I'll uh, move that if I may, Mr. Mayor. I move the Executive Standing Committee request a staff report respecting amendments to the Design Review Committee's terms of reference in Section 4 of the Downtown Land Use Bylaw with respect to length of terms for members and consider a possibility of an automatic renewal, renewing term for a one or two year period. I so move. Second, Tim. Second by Councillor Deputy Mayor. Go ahead, Councillor Mason. Anything on it? So I had a great deal of hesitancy in December to just approve this, but the more I think about it, I don't know a way around what the issue is. And the issue is that uh, by time folks on the Design Review Committee are fully up to speed uh, on the vast scope of work that they are undertaking, uh, 18 months to two years has passed and it's a two year term. So uh, what they have suggested is that a longer term or an automatic renewal uh, would be uh, uh, a way to preserve that knowledge and to help improve the quality of debate and, and discussion uh, at, at that committee. Um, it may be that an automatic renewal is the wrong thing. It may be that we should be asking for a just a longer term. 
and I guess I would ask staff if the motion as written is too prescriptive and if we should amend that to ask for recommendations uh, regarding, you know, I don't know how we put it, addressing that issue, because uh, it is a real issue and it is a highly technical committee, uh, but it would be weird to basically uh, and probably not appropriate to say council shall automatically renew somebody that's tying the future council's hands. But uh, anyway, uh, perhaps the clerk has some thoughts on how we could uh, un untie this knot. All right, we'll go to Ian or John. Ian, have you got thoughts on that? So this motion is drafted for a staff report, um, looking at the option of possibly automatically renewing terms for one or two year period. So I don't think it'd be tying anyone's hands based on the report itself, uh, but I'll defer to John if there's anything that I've missed. You got it. So not required to amend it to say comma and or other solutions like that's that's open enough that staff would feel they have the, the flexibility to come back with an appropriate solution. Certainly based on the discussion that would be the case. Well, in that case, it's just easier than going through a great big, uh, uh, you know, amendment or defeat and new motion to pass this with uh, with uh, the noted discussion. So I, I'll ask council uh, committee to support the motion on the floor. Any other discussion, colleagues? Councilor, oh, are we ready for the question, colleagues? Question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. All right. All right. We'll go to members uh, uh, of the committee. 12.4.1 accessibility impact section for staff reports. Councillor Mason. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is something I've been meaning to do for four years, and it's embarrassing I didn't get to it in the last term. And I was inspired by the uh, uh, you know the recent inclusion of an environmental impact uh, section on our staff reports. That's something the accessibility uh, community has been asking for since I guess that would make it 2015 uh, prior to the previous election. Uh, and, and it's simply that that accessibility impact be recognized and considered when appropriate and on all staff reports. So I think it's pretty straightforward. That being said, I also will say to staff, uh, you may remember, I think actually it was before Jacques time, we had the discussion I think around 2014, 2013 about should we go to triple bottom line assessments and staff reports? And the decision was no uh, for a variety of reasons, uh, workload and, and how do we quantify and all those kind of things. Uh, and then, you know, based on what uh, the CFO Jane Fraser was saying in our last budget committee meeting, if you throw this in there and we've got our social impacts starting to show up and we have the environmental impacts, uh, we are basically almost at a triple bottom line model anyway, uh, just not saying it. So that may be something that should come back in the staff report is can accessibility be identified as a social impact piece or a triple bottom line uh, evaluation and maybe we just align with uh, with with that standard that is emerging in, in the world. So I would still go ahead with the motion, but knowing that that might be their staff recommendation, I see Jacques has, would like to comment on that. So thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I don't see Jacques, but uh, go ahead, Jacques. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I was just nodding my head in agreement with Councillor Mason. So yeah, we'll, the report will we'll address that. So that's what we, I love to see from all staff. Thank you very much for that, Jacques. Uh, so yeah, I'd ask our uh, committee to, to vote for this motion. Thank you. Thank you. Just a quick question. Councillor Hensby. Just a quick question. It seems like our, our staff reports have become like a, a kaleidoscope of lenses, ecological lens, the financial lens. We've got the accessibility now. We have uh, the environmental. I'm just kind of curious of uh, uh, which departments sign off on these various various lenses in regards to do we need another is this becoming like Japanese management a thumbprint on by everybody I'm just kind of curious of at what point you know who's going to be the, the lead lead hand on these particular reports of these different lenses I think that's something that we'll have to look at in the staff report uh, Jacques and have a discussion uh, if it comes back yeah well, like like many other staff reports there there are, there are multi multidisciplinary efforts that across a number of business units. So we have a you know we have we certainly have an accessibility advisor within the Office of Diversity and Inclusion as part of my business unit. 
uh, other folks uh, in, on the, in the, within the social policy lens framework that uh, are inputting into this. So yeah, no worries. There'll be. Oh, I always assign um, folks who need to who need to review or or approve uh, a report in any case when these come forward. So uh, appropriate staff will be involved in these reports for sure. John, anything else? Well, just uh, to the CEO's point, all all um, all reports are the CAOs, and and it's up to the CEO to assign those those people that he feels are best uh, suited to it. So he's he's ultimately responsible. Okay, David. Um, ready for the uh, question, colleagues? All those in favor? All right. All right. All right. All right. Opposed. Thank you. 12.4.2, Councillor Mason, Councillor Code of Conduct Operational Issues. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move the Executive Standing Committee request staff report and recommendations with respect to the Councillor Code of Conduct and any other policies that may need, uh, might be needed to ensure clear guidance, guidelines are in place with respect to the limited role of councillors in the general administration of the business of the municipality. I move. Thank you. Second. Second. Councillor Blackburn seconds. Councillor Mason. Thank you, Councillor Blackburn. Uh, so the issue here is that uh, the most pressing one, though there's a couple, was uh, you know we have had councillors being more involved in discussion with staff of uh, what I would consider contractual matters, uh, specifically around uh, discipline and bid barring of contractors. Uh, uh, under the guise that they were constituents of the of the councillor and that they had the right to be there to represent them, uh, you know, and and to me, that's that's wrong. But we don't have policy saying it's wrong. It's not clear. It's kind of implied, in my opinion, but it's not clear. Uh, similarly, uh, we've had some, and council's aware, though most of this discussion is in camera, so it can't be discussed in in this forum uh, about. Uh, uh, councillor involvement in real estate matters and and so what I'm asking for is a staff report that would provide clarity so that if nothing else uh, we all know where the lines are right we know we know what we're allowed to do and what we're, what we're not allowed to do and that it's clear but the big piece on the contractor management part is staff didn't feel comfortable telling the councillor that they couldn't be somewhere and so I think that it's in all our best interest that we have a very clear delineation saying councillors should not insert themselves into those kind of situations, uh, and, and that will aim that you know that will arm our staff with the tools they need to make sure that they can protect the integrity of those processes. So uh, you know it's a bit of a wide open thing. I did uh, ask uh, Mr. Trace for a little bit of language around the wording of it, uh, and I'm not exactly sure what will come back. What what is uh, what the final recommendation will be, but I think it's a discussion we need to have. So I look forward to the debate and your support. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councilor, uh, uh, Deputy Mayor. Uh, thank you, and I'm happy to support this, but I'm just wondering, and, and John, you might want to jump in on this. I know we've all had discussions with John. We've all had discussions in camera when code of conduct issues come up that we don't really like our existing code of conduct and it needs to be reworked. And uh, I'm just wondering if this isn't an opportunity to go further than this. I have no problem with these, these being added, if you will, or clarified in the existing code of conduct. I'm wondering, I think, John, you were sort of hoping someday, putting words in your mouth shamelessly, that we might ask you or someone someday to rework a code of conduct, sim more similar to what you've seen at other levels of government and, and this sort of thing. Um, I'm just wondering if we shouldn't even take this further since I don't think the provincial group's moving ahead with one. So just, just John, if you wouldn't mind commenting on that, because I, I, I'd like to see this go even further. So, it, um, so uh, nothing wrong with looking at this as an add-on, recognizing there's been a lot of discussion around the code of conduct, um, and um, perhaps this will kick it off. It is, you will see in my in my business plan and, and budget presentation, it is one of the goals of the business unit to look at um, the code of conduct and bring something forward for council to consider in this in this fiscal year. So that is in my work plan um, to move that along, provided that council is agreeable. So when that comes forward, and I'm pleased to hear that, when that's, we'll be voting on whether to give you the, the okay to do that at some other time through the budget, or do you need a, do you need direction now to go ahead and do that? Or? 
Oh, it's it's in the it's in the presentation. Unless somebody tells me not to do it, then that is that would be our our plan um, this year. It's a fairly chunk of work, and there's there's some discussion that needs to happen with councillors to bring it forward. But but overall, I don't I don't need any direction other than the, the fact that if council doesn't want me to do it, then obviously I won't. All right. Well, listen, I'm happy to support this today, and then I'm and I'm also happy to hear what's coming forward in your plan, John. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. I'll just say I, I certainly support this um, and it's probably a good time. We have a council that's half old, half new, not old and new, but half veteran, half non-veteran. And it's probably a good time to deal with some of these um, uh, issues. I think Councillor Mason uh, hits on something that has happened and needs to be fixed. So I, I support that very much. Ready for the question, colleagues? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. All right. That's carried. Thank you, folks. Yes. Um, okay. Sorry. Okay, sorry. Can I just get some? Can I have some confirmation? Because there was some background noise. Was there? Were there any votes opposed to that? I didn't see any. Okay. Thank you. Sorry about that. No problem. Thank you. Um, okay. Does somebody want to move the in-camera minutes first of all, and then we're we'll probably going to have to go in camera to look at about 600 pages of work. Here. Yes, uh, I will do that. Councillor Russell, I move that the in-camera minutes of February 24th, 2020 and April 14th, 2020 be approved, except that I'm not on the committee, so I'm not sure I can. I'm happy to move them. I was there. Moved by the deputy, seconded by Councillor Blackburn. I see a hand there, no voice. Good try, Paul. Uh, I'll second that, yes. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those who simply can't live with this under any circumstances, then that's passed. Thank you. Okay, the other items, it looks like we're going to have to go in camera and have some discussion unless somebody has something they'd like to try. If, if not, perhaps somebody will move that we go in camera. So move, Mr. Chairman. Second. Uh, just before we do, is, is there any notices of motion? All right, move and second it. All in favor going in camera? Aye. Opposed? Aye. We will go in camera, Ian. So that will be the other meeting invitation that you have on your calendar. It should be labeled as in camera executive committee. So that's where this will be. Aye. Thank you. I'll see you all on the other side of the wall.
Can we all hear comments? Hmm. Okay, let's uh, go uh, Ian or Phoebe, whatever we can. Okay. All right, folks, we're back at our executive committee meeting. It is January what, 16th, no, 25th. And um, oh, cow, that's a long time. Uh, we, we, uh, we approved the in-camera minutes. We'll go to item number 14.2, public appointment, Councillor uh, Blackburn. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would move that the executive standing committee one Adopt the recommendations as outlined in the private and confidential staff report dated, uh, dated January 11, 2021. And two, direct that the staff report dated January 11, 2021 be maintained as private and confidential. I so move. Second, Tim. Second by the Deputy Mayor. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That's carried. 14.2.2, public appointments to Metropolitan Regional Housing Authority. Councillor Morse, do you want to take us there? Councillor Morse with us? Councillor Morse is not in the meeting at the moment. We're trying to get her into this one. Okay. We do have quorum and we are good to move forward. If you I'll like. do it. Councillor Mason, do you want to do that one? Uh, sure. Uh, I move that the Executive Standing Committee 1 adopt recommendations as outlined in the private and confidential staff report dated January 11, 2021 and direct that staff uh, direct that staff report dated January 11, 2021 be maintained as private and confidential. I so move. Seconded by Council Deputy Mayor. Ready for the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That is carried. 14.2.3, public appointments, Councillor uh, Mason. I move the Executive Standing Committee 1 adopt the recommendations as outlined in the Private and Confidential Staff Report dated January 12th, 2021 and direct staff report dated January 12th, 2021 may be maintained as private and confidential. Ready for the question, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Item 14.2.4, Councillor Hensby. Uh, public appointment held act port authority motion to help act uh, the executive standing committee one adopt the recommendations as outlined in the private confidential staff report dated january 13th 2021 and to direct the staff that the staff report dated january 13th 2021 be maintained as private and confidential second second by councillor mason ready for the question all those in favor aye, aye. opposed that is carried. Colleagues, we have no extra added items. Notices of motion. Our next meeting is uh, scheduled for February the 22nd. Thank you for joining us for the first executive committee of the new council. Does somebody want to move adjournment? So yes. move. Okay. Do we have? All right, thank you all very much. Bye. Later.